What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten wrestling feuds with unexpectedly ridiculous stories by uh, What Culture Wrestling. Been subscribed to them for a while now. Definitely go check them out if you haven't already. Link to the original video will be down below. Um, this should be an interesting one. I want to kind of get some of these backstories to how uh, these these uh, feuds, you know, what what came about, how the feuds came about, how they ended, what behind the scenes stuff was going on during the feud. I definitely want to check that out. You know, it's always interesting to see how things kind of played out behind the scenes sometimes. So we're going to check that out. Appreciate all the love and support. Getting right into this one. Not even wasting time. From absolute monsters being dumped into the silliest of circumstances to the sort of swerves that had to be seen to be believed. You likely didn't find yourself fantasy booking any of these downright bizarre wrestling scenarios in your spare time, and it's not hard to see why. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 wrestling feuds with unexpectedly ridiculous stories. Number hmm. 10, The Rock slams the British Bulldog in dog poo. Oh, Back in 1999, yeah. the people's champion was that. well and truly on the rise. And after a number of WWF championship victories and ultimately deciding to team with old rival Mankind, The Rock soon found himself suddenly thrust into Definitely an odd scenario this. involving a certain British Bulldog and dog crap. With Rocky going one-on-one -on -one against the legendary performer at that year's No Mercy, the Rock and Sock connection first had to deal with Davey Boy Smith and his tag partner of Val Venus on the October 11th edition of Raw, though. So how did the People's Champion get one over on his upcoming pay-per-view rival? By having Mankind scoop up some backstage dog poop, place it on a board, and eventually rock bottom the former Intercontinental Champion onto it post-match, of course. Far from simply being artificial feces, this was later revealed to be very much legit dog poop, dog poop, dog poop as Michael Cole reveled in reminding us, with Davy Boy's daughter later confirming that they could smell it from so far away on the night. As far Oh, damn. Ugh. <laughs> That's awful, knowing he really did that spot. I mean, they, I guess... He, he was committed to it, I guess. As go home angles go, this was some pretty bizarre crap, and it still makes for a surreal watch to this day. Number nine, Braun Strowman wins the tag Ugh. titles with a kid. On top of Imagine it. Imagine being the person to have to actually get collect all that poo to like bring to the show. Ugh playing host to the return of Daniel Bryan, debut of Ronda Rousey, and whatever the hell that Undertaker John Cena showdown was. Yeah. WrestleMania 34 also brought with it the long-awaited reveal of precisely who would be teaming alongside Braun Strowman in a Raw Tag Team Championship battle with The Bar. Instead of the big show popping up at the show of shows alongside his fellow giants or another, you know, wrestler taking part in the yeah. wrestling match, however, the monster of all monsters had a better idea. After stomping around ringside for a spell and ultimately going for a <laughs> wander through the many crowd, Strowman felt that a small child Nicholas. by the name of Nicholas was the way to go. And sure enough, both Seamus and Cesaro were made to look like absolute geeks by the time Stro <laughs> and his 10-year-old teammate so walked stupid. out of New Orleans as the new champs. Adding insult to injury, the youngest champ in WWE history was then forced to relinquish his title with Braun due to scheduling conflicts. School. He was going back to school. Number 8. Abyss gets magic power. And I believe I think there was one of, that was one of the wrestler's sons. I, I once again, that's a cool moment for him. He'll probably never ever forget the time he won the Raw Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania. So that's cool. I'm I'm not taking that away from him, but come on, bro, you could have gave him a different spot. They, <laughs> you literally made the championships and him look like a complete joke. I'm talking about. The uh, Seamus and uh, uh, Cesaro at the time. You made them look like jokes. You made them look like jokes. Cool moment for the kid, and I'm happy for him. He'll always have that moment for the rest of his life. And the crowd was, they popped because it was just a cool moment. You ain't going to boo the kid. It was cool. But when you really think about it, they could have just had a wrestler. I, I, there's so many things they could have did. That... Yeah, right. Powers from Hulk Hogan's ring. The all consistently right. peculiar run right. known as Total Nonstop Action boasted one of the oddest storylines imaginable back in 2010. With the once intimidating figure of Abyss being saved from a heel beatdown by none other than a Hulk Hogan who had just arrived in town to shake up the Impact Zone, the performer who had become a shell of his former Wrecking Ball self was soon gifted the Hulkster's Hall of Fame ring. Why? Sorry, Simon. Well, simple. It possessed the power to make him a god of wrestling. 
Sorry, JBL? Abyss not only regained a great deal of confidence and began steamrolling his way through the roster again, but he also started to don red and yellow flickers of Hulkamania all over his gear too. In other words, Hogan's ring was slowly infecting him with those all-important vitamins, brother. It was hilariously dumb, and Abyss quickly found himself being <laughs> overshadowed by both the former owner of that jewelry and an unretired Ric Flair during the Over the Hill Icons battles. This truly odd ring-focused angle thankfully came to an end a few months down the road, but it's safe to say this wasn't exactly the most effective way of turning the monster into the next John Cena, as the Immortal One once declared. Wish I couldn't see this. Number seven, the ultimate mirror mind. The ring gave him powers like uh, <laughs> freaking Captain Planet when they put on the rings. <laughs> gave him powers. Game set up the rematch of the century. On paper, oh, the rematch man, of the century funny. between the immortal Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior <laughs> should have made for some genuinely blockbuster television for World Championship Wrestling back in 1998. The iconic pair hadn't so much as locked up in singles action since their epic WrestleMania 6 clash a near decade earlier. But in the company's attempts to recapture lightning in a bottle when it came to the clashing of these particular titans, someone thought it would be an absolutely terrific idea to add a new layer of supernatural abilities to the already chaotic Warrior character. And just to really dial up the foolish weirdness, the ghostly appearance slash vision of Hogan's giggling adversary haunting him in a mirror backstage was somehow visible to the Hulkster, what? folks watching at home, and commentators, that but not Eric Bischoff who was standing right next to his top guy. Baffling. However, the best slash worst of this disastrous feud wow. was yet to come, brother. As the pair's eventual Halloween Havoc horror show went on to become what many class as one of the worst bouts of all time, an already agonizing showing in between the ropes was soon immortalized for all the wrong reasons, thanks to one hell of a botched yeah. flash paper spot. At least we'll always have the surreal visual of the Hulkster accidentally singeing his own eyebrows and mustache on pay-per-view though, eh? <laughs> Number six, Drew McIntyre targets <laughs> Eric Rowan's spider. With Eric Rowan spending the last- Oh. I was thinking this video was going to be talking about like interesting stories on how some of these storylines even came about or what happened that led to the potential booking of these storylines. All it's doing, it's making me remember some of the worst parts of wrestling. The spider shit, that was just, just, oh, just dumb. At the stages of 2019, walking around with a rather large cage in his possession, trying to figure out what in the holy hell this towering one-time bludgeon brother was affectionately conversing with inside of the sacked container, actually became a surprisingly fun addition to the weekly slog that was the Red Show. The hilariously bizarre sight of a jobber being covered in red liquid courtesy of the being within only added to the surreal intrigue. And then, in an equally odd throwaway backstage skit on March 2nd, 2020, oh, what a time, Rowan suddenly revealed the giant's furry and not at all mechanical spider within to the respectful no way jose and his conga line pals and byron saxton's cries of i think it's alive would have likely sat as the undisputed highlight of this entire weird character detour were it not for babyface drew mcintyre taking a set of steel steps to the creature and its cage a week later to the sound of euphoric cheers yes. nothing but smiles on faces quite like the crushing of a robo arachnid am i right <laughs> he fucking killed it he's like get this Get it out of here. Number five, Jason Jordan is Kurt Angle's oh, son. Within a month or so of being brought man. back into the WWE mix as Monday Boy. Night Raw's new general manager, Kurt Angle was already on the verge of being ruined by a series of texts being sent to Corey Graves. And what was this jaw-dropping controversial secret that could so see Angle dumb. lose his family and potentially even destroy his career? It turns out that he was actually the daddy of none other than one-time American alpha star Jason Jordan. If all of this felt as though it came a little bit out of the blue and hadn't been really that well thought thought through, well, you won't be too surprised to discover that this was actually designed as little more than a typically horrendous rib from Vince McMahon. Awful. The boss learned of the fact Angle had dated a few African-American women in the past and thought it would be hilarious to head in this particular storyline direction. What a weirdo. Now, this is the, the tidbit. Like, that's how this came about. That. That is... You're telling me we went through this awful storyline because Vince McMahon found out that Kurt Angle was dating some black queens. And he was like, oh, you like that, that dark complexion of women, huh? Mm, mm, that's, that's funny. You know what? I have a great idea. We're going to turn this into a story angle. Kurt Angle had a, a child with a black woman and he became a wrestler.
This is why. For people who are talking about, it's not that bad, bad that Vince is back in, in, and potentially in charge of creative. This is why it's bad. Because of shit like this. No one wants to see that. That's not funny. You could possibly do that in the Attitude Era, the early 90s. You can't do that in 2022, 2023, any of the past 5 to 10 years. It Google is a thing. You can't do those storylines no more. They don't work. They barely worked back then. They don't work now. Jesus Christ, that's awful. Old man. And while the odd twist didn't exactly lead to instantly captivating storytelling out awful. of the gates, it did eventually seem as though a slow burning heel turn for Jordan was ultimately setting the stage for a no doubt entertaining showdown with his paps at WrestleMania 35. Unfortunately though, a serious neck injury cut Jordan down way yeah. too early in his career and that blow off never came to pass. Oh, but it was still a peculiar ride while it lasted even without a real conclusion. Number four, the Street Profits and Viking Raiders get compared competitive outside of the ring. In all honesty, you're not exactly short on options when it comes to utterly absurd pandemic era WWE developments, are you? Mm -hmm. And while the likes of Randy Orton and the Fiend's never ending fire slash goo wars were something, and the visual of Seth Rollins popping a masked icon's eye out of his head are definitely up there in terms of unquestionably ridiculous tales told during this period, the competitive battle between the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders in the Performance this. Center era was every bit as loony. Instead of having the units battle it out in something as outrageous as a gripping in-ring best of seven showcase, WWE opted to steer clear of the empty arena setting and dumped the lads into various non-wrestling competitions, including yeah, axe throwing, basketball, is. and uh, golf. But that wasn't yes. even the strangest part of the tag title program. An all-out backstage brawl erupted between the rivals at Backlash, with the units battling around the parking lot before suddenly uniting as the Viking Prophets to take the fight to Akira Tozawa and his team of ninjas instead. Seven-foot ninjas, turkey legs, dumpster <laughs> monsters. What a time. <laughs> well, that fucking Omos, bro? Wait a minute. That was seven-foot ninjas. I'm glad I ain't see this shit. What the fuck is that? Two foot ninjas, turkey legs, dumpster <laughs> monsters. What a time what to be a whatever the hell this was fan, eh? Number three, Shawn Michaels teams with the almighty. The fact Vince McMahon ultimately felt that a feud centered around himself, his son Shane, Shawn Michaels, and the almighty, no, not that one, would go down no. a treat on WWE television. <laughs> I just want y'all to understand. That this is just one of the just wildest shit Vince McMahon just legitimately created. Shawn Michaels teamed with God himself. They had God personified as a light beam. I and shouldn't come as that much of a surprise, really. But that didn't make the sight of the Heartbreak Kid eventually teaming with the Spotlight, also known as God, in a no-holds-barred match at Backlash any less outlandish to behold. In the lead-up to that planned bout with the hipster from heaven, as McMahon put it, and HBK, the McMahons also opted to pay an equally problematic oh visit to a God, church, with Vince doing his best impression of his son-in-law's entrance with oh holy water before comparing himself with the man upstairs. The entire sudden so... and offensive religious detour was simply a way for the crazy Bill Millionaire to fuse Michael's real life status as a born again Christian into the on screen drop. And once again, this is this is Vince taking a real life situation or whatever. Think you know what will be great since Sean has changed his life and found God, and I'm the one that made Sean, and he's turned his back on me and he went to God. I think I should have a match with God. <laughs> And my son, Shane, versus HBK and God himself. And we'll see who really runs things. Armor. And it was an entirely uncomfortable and bizarre one at that. Yes! Number two, a revived demon stumbles in the closing stages. The long awaited comeback of not only Finn Balor to the main roster landscape, yes. but the demon persona that hadn't been seen in an age could have provided WWE with a much needed new addition at the top of the card. It didn't, obviously, because this was Vince McMahon in 2021. And instead, the call was made to have the former Universal Champion look like a complete and utter idiot on the PLE yes. stage during yes. an eventual showdown with Roman Reigns Run over match. the top strap. After an end. hilarious mid-match resurrection which yeah. saw the challenger flail around
around like a fish attempting to stay alive on dry land, Bala's theme began to play out as he scaled the top rope for a title-winning coup de grace. Bala soon wound up whacking his nads on the turnbuckle thanks to the top rope suddenly deciding to snap off entirely. And the most ridiculous part of it all, the company just moved on like nothing had even happened in the wake of the head of the table taking advantage of a poorly put together ring. Number one. Bro, the, 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 the story is God helped. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> one demand streak ends via the cattle prod. Trying to land on precisely how to bring one of the most dominant and legendary streaks in wrestling history to an end was always going to be a pretty tall order. What human alive was realistically going to be able to bring down a force of nature like Big Bad Goldberg? Yeah. He'd already ran through everyone from Hulk Hogan to the giant. So fans were genuinely invested in what would ultimately be the downfall of demand at some point down the road. All of the fantasy booking in the world, however, wouldn't have resulted in you coming anywhere near close to the finish, eventually landed on for bringing the streak to its dramatic conclusion. Instead of having the wrecking ball finally meet his physical match, or an up-and-coming sensation steal a life-changing win against mm -hmm. the bald titan, the simply mystifying call was made to have him be cattle prodded by Scott Hall, en route to Kevin Nash picking the bones for the monumental win at Starcade 1998. That alone was the sort of laughable twist that ultimately set the stage for WCW's downfall. But the yeah. fact this also paved the way for the infamous finger poke of doom cements it firmly is one of the dumbest and most ridiculous conclusions to a once captivating storyline so... of all time. Yeah. And that's our list. Know of any other wrestling feuds yeah, with unexpectedly that's... ridiculous stories? Then let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share. No, that's that's trash, bro. That's fucking garbage. Fucking garbage. <laughs> I, I, just thinking about that, his legendary streak being ended because a motherfucker used a cattle prod. <laughs> I'm done. Hey, if you know any other unlike feuds that just ended in just the worst way or a feud that was just started in such a weird way that it didn't make sense, it didn't enhance the feud, the matches or nothing, you just like, what the fuck did I just see? Comment down below, let me know. So we can go down memory lane and check out some of these ridiculous feuds or ridiculous matches or stipulations or story angles that Vince McMahon or anybody else created and you just had to sit there and be like, huh? That would make sense. Okay. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.